about his beginnings, we're going to talk about his philosophy, we're even going to have the honor of watching Hachi Guy perform some of his katas that he has through the years developed for the benefit of all concerned without taking into consideration whether or not they can perform certain moves physically or not, but yet they can still study the actual reality of Iaido and the martial arts. We've been together, you and I know each other for close to 50 years or probably more. I don't even know anymore, okay? Well, enough, yes, definitely. And so we have a certain understanding of the arts that many, many people just don't understand and they don't get it, okay? okay. And I would like to use this show to f showcase you and your philosophy so that these people out here will know Whoa, Hanchi's done it again. He's got another real living legend on the show. Start this off with a very, very, very difficult question. Okay. okay? Why don't you tell the audience, myself, your beginnings in the martial arts and how you felt about it and what drove you to devote your life to what is certainly not a money-making endeavor. <laughs> it sure wasn't. It sure wasn't. It sure wasn't. Go for when it. I, when, listen, when I got involved with it, I didn't really know what martial art was until I met a gentleman who who gave me the access to martial art. That was Billy, uh, Grandmaster Billy Davis. Billy Davis was the one that really got me involved, which he was like my father in a sense because I was a very juvenile delinquent. When was this? This was when I was a kid in Staten Island going back in 1950. Ooh. Uh, That's it. Cut it there. Okay. <laughs> I mean, for 40 years old, you look terrific. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I appreciate that. Okay. <laughs> All right, got it. But the fact is that uh, he coached me to the martial art by actually uh, coming to my home, talking to my mother. My mother, you know, my mother had a hard time dealing with me because I was really like a juvenile. And my mom, then he knew my mother a long time when he came out of the military in a sense, and he said to me, uh, I, I want to teach us some martial arts. My mother said, take him, teach him. The boy mom said, you crazy? My mom said, do what I tell you, okay. So at that point, he would come every, every day to my home and pick me up and take me out in the, in, in back of the school and show me different things and show me the uh, combat judo. And I'm like a fool, just for jumping and laying flat, backhand on the floor, on the ground, the grass, and everything else. Rain, it's rainy, it's muddy, had me still coming out there, and, everything. I just, and I didn't like it. And I told him I don't want to do no more martial arts. And after that point on, then he come and got me at a school. I said, oh, we, you know, go out for the fire escape and try to sneak away from him. And the fact that he's always waiting for me, he said, come here. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, I got to the point that I hated him, to the one point, really. I did. Yeah. And then after a while that, you know, uh, I got into it, I got older, I got involved, it kept pushing me. Then I got to understand what it really meant. And then at uh, that time and everything, since then I've been one of the top uh, people doing uh, combat judo. And then at that point then he had to go return back to the military at that time and told him I can't do it no more right now. So he took me to a, a, reg a, a respectable school, uh, Ishimu school. The little teacher was Conrad was the teacher. Short little run. I mean, really, the short little dude, but he was very fast, fast hand, fast front kick, and everything else. I mean, was also Staten Island. Yeah, it's Staten Island. I mean, for me, for me, uh, it was like uh, you know something new. Uh, you had no choice. I had no choice. That, that I, met, I met a lot. Of, I, met I mean, a, we didn't sign up for karate. I met, I met, one. I met, yeah. I met, yeah. a, I met yeah. a lot of tough cookies. I met a lot of tough cookies there. That's cool. Yeah. And they tried to beat me up, and the fact of that, you know, when I thought throwing him. Thrown to the mat and everything else, they didn't have no idea about being thrown to the mat. They became good, we became good friends. Really, really, they were Don Rankin, but I was like a little, little like a like a beginning to their karate. That's right. And when you get to see who I was at that time, then I went into it. I got took uh, it should move very serious. 
And then uh, years went by uh, since they got got involved when he got married, and I felt like I was my life was taken from me because this man was a great practitioner. He All right. he gave me a lot of he gave me a lot of insights of what issue was was. He gave me his life, and I really put it that way. I was like one of the standing. Uh, People's in the sense. And okay, I really felt good. Let me let me just yeah. who were some of the other people that you met along the way? Well, okay, uh, Bill. Uh, I mean, this was still going on for another okay, forever. Right? At that point, I left from there. I was, at that point, he left there. Then the gold guru came into the school itself. I became one of the gold guru students, and we were doing the Japanese gold guru, and I under the uh, Yamaguchi. The cat. I said my teacher, but my teacher was uh, uh, Bill Diletto. Diletto was my teacher. He was he was the head of the head, head teacher of the school. He taught me to say the gold jewel system. And I, it, I kept going at that time. Then afterwards, as the years went by, then uh, Chris the baby he came into the school too as well. He became he one of the uh, the uh, gold jewel man, one of the best cockpit men I ever met in my life. Was a very good good teacher, good practitioner. Then Chuck Merriman, me, Louis, the Louis Delgado, yeah, uh, many, yeah. many uh, Skipper Ingram, not Skipper Ingram, Skipper Mullins, and Skipper Mullins, yeah, and many, right. and many others that came there and studied the Gold Jewel system. We all were the ones who talked about the Gold Jewel system, trying to keep it alive. So what we doing? I was part of that that system. Did you know Urban? Urban, no, Urban, I didn't know nothing about Urban. I didn't know who Urban was at the time. At okay, all right. Yeah. So this is going way, way I'm going back. Going back at the time was with yeah, everybody, okay, you know, okay. and 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 the fighting concept was that. You didn't, no, didn't have no gear. You had to train. When that guy hit you, you hit the floor. If you wish to guard, you can get up. That's how it was. That's how they hit you. And at that time, I guess I was the only guy that was thin. At that time, the guys were big, and they would try to beat me up. It's such a, it, was all, it was actually all full contact. That damn right it was. With, uh, without was without uh, was, all these pretty little they, pants they try, and things. They try to hurt you. They kick you. You go through the wall. That's how powerful it was. And I learned you get to understand the concept. Then I became the man who started doing the butt weapon. And I did, That's and it. I stuck with it, and that's what I did. And I went on beyond that point. Then at that time, from Louis Delgado, and I at that time left that school, even though the school was the best. I ain't going to say it wasn't it was the best school. The teachers were the best. But I had to go on to new challenges under the Goju Rule system. And I met a lot of heavy, heavy Goju people at that time I came to New York City. Okay. And I met a lot of people trying to kill me. And I tell you one thing. And say, <laughs> they I mean, meant it. What, what this man... What, what Billy, Billy David gave me and the baby and all gave me, gave me the power. I went on beyond that point. I taught a lot of grandmasters out here right now who don't give me the, don't give me respect to who I am. I taught a lot of them. I ain't going to say no name because I didn't put nobody down. We're going to get into it, but you want to say names, but I, but man. That, but that, but that, but like I said, everybody got egos. I ain't not on no ego. I still yeah. get out there and still do the same thing I'm doing now, fighting. I have to fight, I still do it. I still work out. This is my job. This is what this I do. Is, this is what you do. My job is keep martial arts alive. And I'm doing what I'm doing. I hope everybody understand. Keep martial arts alive. Take that belt off your head and keep it keep Kobudo alive. That's what it is. What do you think the biggest problem with training people today or with martial arts in general with most of the senses? What do you think the biggest problem is? Because I know there's a lot of young people and they come to me and they'll say to me, well, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And I said, that's fine, but you've also got to understand that you've got to know the roots. Well, they want instant martial arts. They're looking for instant martial arts. They're looking for instant martial arts. Yeah, yeah. It's not going to happen. They don't want to, they want to get out and work and do knuckle push-ups and do a lot of, they call it do a knuckle foot by barricade, nothing. When I hit you in your bone, in your body, your hand ain't develop, your hand will go whoop, you're going to drop because that's right. you can't take the blow. That's the whole right. idea what we're trying to do is keep you strong inwards and outwards. So this way, when you come to your comp up your opponent, you know how to deal with him. Once okay. you hit him one time, he ain't getting up. But what he did now, they watered down so much now that you know you can't. They don't only really want to train the full budo where you hit him. Yeah, hit something, the real deal. You make sure you ain't getting up. Mr. Marshall came in and he took over to one extent, but which I don't knock into that that sports. I take Marshall for one different reason. That's the worst part. Grandmaster guy, straight ahead. What do you see as the future for martial arts as far as our old way of thinking, which let me tell you boys and girls is not the old way of thinking, it's the only way of thinking from our perspective compared to like, you know, guys running around with 15th degree, 29th well, degree, 42nd degree black belts, 
and just teaching, get them in, get them out, get them in, get them out, which has always been a problem, but it now it's just getting totally out of control. I call it, I would call it deterioration. It's because deterioration, that, yeah, 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 very good. I would call yeah. it that way because that a lot of them do not have the ability what we know, and we and they, a lot of the, the young people that never continue on go through the whole ritual know what we want them to learn. So they just sort of take whatever they got and and make it make up what they want and make it up and make it watered down in martial arts. Okay. That's why the that's why the Taekwondo and many styles have their differences to what they do it, but they do it on a way that it makes the child weak, not make the child strong. I don't know I just feel bad that older folks do not really the older martial arts do not give the other uh, young black belts who are coming up know what the meaning of respect is all about. They don't have no respect that's, in the martial uh, arts. They don't respect thing, at all. Yeah. I mean, the grandmasters are out here in the, in the tournament, they, they judge or something, they, they, they volunteer their time, and the young boys get attitude, and get very angry and act like they're crazy, and jump up in one of the grandmasters' face and turn around and one of the grandmasters to, to destroy him or paralyze him, then he's wrong because he doesn't have no control of his thinking. And this is why we tell the young people that come in martial arts, have control of your temper, control yourself. Take martial arts what it means to you as a human being. Respect your elders. Elders is very important first. Your elders. I don't care all in the street. Your elders are first. You must respect them. If you can't respect elders, your mother, your father, your sister and your brother, then you ain't nobody. You don't belong in martial arts. We don't want you. We don't care how bad you can beat. To, to, to anybody, you are not wanted. We want human beings who have power but know how to respect. Them. And they understand the samurai philosophy, the uh, samurai, samurai principles, samurai, well, samurai, uh, which I, I has would, to be like well, spread out. Maybe yeah, but I look at it. Sam yes. Samurai is a very harsher way. To look at it. That's the way the way to die under the term what it consists of. But we know we still have that respect in the same way our elders and so on. But it's a different. That sword you have in there must remain inside. Once you take it out, you must use it. And that's the law that the teachers teach you. Keep that sword inside them. Keep your mind inside of that scabbard so you do not disrespect the law is what it means. And this is what it can deal with. This is why uh, all of martial, all the great punches, they have come from some way, formality anyway. I, you know all of them. But everybody has their own little flavor and that taste. So it's okay. But we must keep martial arts alive. If we do not, then we are doomed. Oh, mixed martial Oh, yes, that's the excuse. I said martial art. Now, I have many meanings. I see many things ahead for martial art. Keep the traditional. I'm not saying that your man-made martial art is somebody that's traditional. Everybody traditional, but taking something off of traditional, we can add on to it. Yes. But if we keep traditional concepts, if we learn it from what we learn it, then have the merit of what it consists of, how to be humble, how to front kick, reverse punch, martial gaddy, all the differences we're doing, but we do it in a kata concept. And that's great, but traditional. I'm not talking about, you know, you could be Hollywood, fly in the air, acting back in the air, and jump in the air, do all the Kung Fu Charlie, all that. Movies is great, but reality is so important. Thank you, sir. No. But even, even though they got their hands tied because they got a little family they got to bring up and up the capacity, but after they, after they got that rank in their head, they don't want to go no further. They got lazy. And at the point, I don't want these uh, grand, so grandmasters get lazy because, like I said, to get a title of grandmaster, it's not, a, it's not easy. I always say, once you're a son down, you're an instructor. You're not a son down in any school, you're not a son down. You have no right to teach anybody karate really at the time, but now the rainbow colors came in town, the taekwondo's come in town, made that dough, and took everybody else's situation, made the rank so simple for these young people to get ranked and everything. Now it's destroyed the true Buddha. The way to live, the way to die, that's where it's supposed to be. A lot of them ain't ready to do it. Now if we take those people who really want to train, bring them here. Let's get them shown how we want to do it. I don't want to teach you too now. This is on picture, but Come and train where we train, guarantee we show how we do it. We'll work you. As I can say, if you'd like to come, come on and hang out with me. I appreciate it. Hey, tell us a little bit about how you got involved with EIDO. Oh, EIDO? Yeah, oh, that's, that's... I mean, besides still being using the stick ball back when you were a kid, man. Let me give you an example. I, 
a gentleman called, there was the Army Navy store on Broadway, uh, and uh, we knew the gentleman who had the Army Navy store. Sensei uh, Yoshito Tani was the Baron of Japan. He came here and uh, talked about bringing uh, Japanese swordsmanship into America. And I was so thrilled when he told me, he said, you don't want to learn it, you know? And I said, learn it? My God, I wanted to learn. But when he got, uh, we went to the McBurney Y doing Yaido, the McBurney YMCA. Left the McBurney YMCA, we came there, he developed a lot of, a lot of sponsors, sponsored him to a big 20,000 square feet dojo called Japan Cultural Center. Mm -hmm. This school had over five to over five hundred to a thousand students in their school. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm not trying to exaggerate, but he had a, what do you say? He had quite a bit, over five hundred. And a lot of them come in and want to learn Japanese swordsmanship, which he taught. Real swords. Just about half of the school cut their fingers, cut hand, got their hands cut. Uh -huh. That's how bad it was. So we had to change it, bring it into Bokens, bring it to by Bokens. So we taught people Bokens. And summarize. But I admire Yoshitoro kind of because he had the, the taste, the style, the way he cut, the way he moves. I adopt his way because that's what I want to learn by watching very carefully. And at the old beginning, when he said, when he sat down at Tasahisa, I'm wondering, how does being sit down on his knees? I couldn't sit down on my knees for nothing. I mean, my knees were killing me. To see, to see him sit down and talk and everything else and jump up and cut. I said, I couldn't believe this. But he did. And I'm wondering. So one day he invited me to come into the locker room with him. He said, come. Come, change, come with me. I went there and everything. And I see him had knee pads on. Oh my God. I was, I, I, I couldn't believe he had knee pads on. I didn't know that. Dude, and I'm, I'm calling myself being a warrior with no knee pads on. My knee was killing me and everything else. But I still adopt doing yado without knee pads. Until I got to a certain age, when I got around my, my my older age, they was their name, my older age, then I adopted knee pads. And that's why I now I still do use knee pads and I still go into Tasahisa, Hasagawa, all the different styles I can still do it. Even though I had a hip replacement, I'm still doing it. Because like I said before, if you're a martial artist, you gotta train. Yeah. That's, what, that's what kept me going now. God bless. Would you uh, like to show us uh, one of your favorite katas? Oh, or one of oh, 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 or I, any of your cards. Let, let, let me show you. I, I can show you a, a card that, that called stabilized motion. I mean the fact that, that we both got a sword, and you have here we have a sword. How do we cut a man so close to us, and how we can use him so yeah. quick? I want to show you. The, I do it slow because I want to show you that how easy to put a man in trauma so fast to cut him, and and, and it still look great with the, bring the sword back in the scabbard. Great. Can I let me show you? Can I show you one minute, guys? It's, Absolutely. It won't take less than time. Let me show it to you. No, take as much time as you no, want. No, no, no. For your incredible pleasure and enlightenment, Chief Grandmaster Hanshi Riko Guy will now perform his kata Ichi Home. I'm going to stand here this is, and let him this, cut me. This is, I'm not going to cut. I just want to show you that. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. But if you have his sword, if you have his sword in his in his uh, in his pouch, it's still the same yeah. thing. I want to show you that we had a dispute, and the most important thing when I say dispute that he violated the laws. Of us, to say of the organization, whatever, and I have my sword and everything else. This is the whole concept is when we talk in someone. Now, notice how I will actually will move my body without looking directly at him. Watch the concept, how nice it works. Look, this is how the motion works. I hit him. No, don't move. That's why I hit him. I come. I will cut him across his neck, come across. Then I will come back and I will finish him off. This is this way here. Finish him off. After I finish him off, this is what I do, and come directly back, and watch. What's up? What? Would you like to do another now, one? Now, that's, how, that's how fast the technique is done. Right? This is how the technique works. I'm here, I talk, I move. One. Excellent. Okay. This kata is ni home. Okay. This is ni home. Please sensei, step back. This is fast. This is not, I do it fast. You want to do it slow. We do it slow or fast, sensei? Uh, show it slow. 
on me. Okay. And that way, that way can do it fast. Okay. Okay. If I show it, so this is this is going to be. Knee all way. Go ahead. This is this is done being directly slow. I'm coming directly in the motion here. Now watch how the concept works. He moves. I come directly up and shift the slow. Don't cut you. Don't step in the face. Don't step in the face. I come directly up. You understand what I'm saying to you? I come up and I cut across. Cross. And then at the same time, I cut across the arm, the leg, and I bring the sword directly watching. Okay? Very excellent. Okay. Very excellent. Okay. So the whole idea when you're doing this for me, when you come up, you want to really cut the person directly. When you come up, see here, when you come directly forward. All right, then, do it again. Do it again fast. Do it again fast. Okay. Just get them doing it fast. Oh, you want to do it fast. I like that one, huh? One. Okay. Okay, cut. You have had the incredible opportunity at Hanchi's World, with Hanchi Steve Kaufman moderating, of course, presenting to you Chief Grand Master Hanchi Rico Guy. In our society, Hanchi Guy is a living legend. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Hanchi Guy, was that? Thank you, thank you, thank you so thank much you. You, for coming to this show you. and expressing your true faith. Thank you. you can contact Hanchi Rico Guy at pennyjohnson1 at gmail.com. It's right here on your screen. pennyjohnson1 at gmail.com. Okay? Hanchi Guy is located in Manhattan on 14th Street and he is readily available to teach any of you and all of you the true discipline of the martial arts. And of course, if you have any questions about Hanchi's World, I'm at hanchisworld at gmail.com, and you can get me anytime you want. We look forward to seeing you the next time. Send in those cards and letters, folks, and we're going to probably get a whole bunch of them, you know? But that's what it's about. We've been around. We know what's going on. And we ain't holding it back. We got, what are you going to do? Not be your friends? Well, we'll cut that part out. Okay. <laughs> thank you very much for, uh, you know, thank you very much for watching. Look forward to seeing you next time. Us. Us.